Hey, Shubi Doodlers, how are you doing? Today I'm drawing a Dormouse, that's D in my animal ABC, which I'm uh, designing for mugs and t-shirts and stuff like that, which you can buy following the links above <laughs> and the links down below. I'll be using a pencil and a pen and an eraser and a paintbrush and some watercolors, but let's not talk about it. Let's do it. So I'm wanting several different things here and I'm gonna start by roughly drawing where the Dormouse is gonna be. And that's, I want it to have this sort of cute little angle and then that's going to be kind of its head. And then the tails kind of come out like that. And it wants to be a little bit sort of pointed there. And we want to have a sort of a cute sleepy kind of feel to it. And then we want these cute little kind of claws and this one will be just holding his tail down. And then the back legs, um, they'll be kind of, you know, this <laughs> all folded up here. And they'll be sort of like that. And then this one will be, or maybe coming out like that over the top. Now, this is our door mouse. So we need to kind of surround it in a circle of leaves. And these are going to be oak leaves because I think they're kind of easier to draw that way. This is going to be the part of the mug that faces you and is also going to be the t-shirt the um, part as well. And then I'm going to draw some extra leaves and acorns and things like that, which I can then kind of ad adapt in Photoshop for the mug and other things like that. So here I'm going to, going to draw these kind of oak leaves and I'm drawing oak leaves because <laughs> I think they're just sort of easier to to do and and so I wanted to sort of keep around this um, sort of circle thing there and I'll maybe bring this out here a bit more like that so we can have um, more like that and then maybe in there so I, I'm just going to start uh, inking now and see what happens so I'm going to draw um, these leaves so you really want to draw things that are in front first and we'll just kind of do that so it's, why is it a dormouse I, I, I didn't actually know this I've always thought it was a door like sort of hiding behind the door uh, and in fact it's from the French dormir to sleep and that all kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So it's it's a sleepy mouse, which it certainly is. And if you know your Alice in Wonderland, the dormouse is always kind of fast asleep. <laughs> and we're going to maybe have another bit sort of underneath here, like that. So we want to put these veins in as well as we're going. And then maybe have a little bit more, just sort of filling in these spaces like that. And then we're going to want to have this sort of tummy and little pink legs, little claws on the end. And, and then I think the tail is quite hard because it's kind of smooth to draw this very big sort of prehensile tail that uses for wrapping around branches to help it climb around um, and it's quite furry but it's quite you want to make it look sort of light <laughs> and not a great hard heavy thing so that's sort of doing it there I think and then we can have some in there and then we want this is the rest of the sort of tumminess curling around and see, uh, like that and the little claws probably got too many claws on there <laughs> I don't think anybody's seriously counting and then we want to these ears around there and then we want a little kind of nose in there and a furry face 
and then we want these kind of very innocent sleepy eyes and then we want a little hand sticking out there as well and he's all kind of folded up I'll, I'll, I'll wait to do that side because I need to do a few more oak leaves yet like that and maybe one like that coming around um <laughs> so I'm balancing this up as I'm going along and why am I doing I'm doing this whole ABC series here on so you're in a joint channel which I hope you are subscribed to and if not click down there and make sure that you are keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week and I'm doing this ABC of animals series at the moment um, because because I can uh, <laughs> mainly I thought it'd be really interesting to do a whole series that's kind of really designed for mugs and t-shirts and to see what happens and I have in the back of my mind also it'd be quite fun once I'd done this uh, to go on to have birds and insects and uh, just to just sort of keep going year after year churning out t-shirt designs and you can click the link up here and get your t-shirt if you like uh, you don't have to but it helps me keep going on this channel and we'll give you a really nice kind of t-shirt to say hey I got a Dormouse t-shirt you might be a big Dormouse fan next what I'm going to do is to imagine a load of oak leaves coming out this way something like that so yeah I'll just start there and just sort of wiggle around like that and here's another one so we can draw that sort of coming in there like that we'll have one coming the other direction because they don't all fall down neatly and we'll have one coming over there and then we want them to be sort of on top of each other as well so we need like it's like a forest floor is the effect that we're after like that and so this is going to be a very autumnal thing so the uh, dormice they kind of fill themselves up with nuts and berries and stuff in the autumn or the fall depending on what you like to call it here in the UK we <laughs> we call the fall the autumn which you might do too and maybe use both terms I don't know um, so they and this is the hazel dormouse so there are different dormice types around the world but they're all sort of basically the same idea I think so they'll kind of fill themselves up and then they build their little nest and uh, I feel I need to do I'm just going to do a few odd ones that I can maybe slot in behind so this is all <laughs> all with Photoshop in mind and there we go and I think I'm going to need to have some acorns just in case. So I'm going to have an acorn like that. Uh, a little stalk and maybe another one here. A little stalk and then maybe one just sort of sticking up like that there. Yeah, so I think the technology is it's just there for making mugs and t-shirts now and because it was there and if, in fact they were nagging me to make <laughs> to make t-shirts and things like that. and then I thought this is a way of doing it if people don't want them then then I'll know that people don't want them <laughs> and if they do then that's great but it's a reason uh, to do a series of drawings so I thought that would be a good idea 
and then to see if people would actually want to buy t-shirts which is kind of a new thing for me really because I've always just been so so sort of my mind has been completely fixated on on children's books which is what I've been doing all these years and so it's kind of quite interesting to do something different and you kind of have to think slightly differently so I'm not sort of painting this to to put in a frame um, although you know I could do prints maybe as well that's a whole other thing again now I'm gonna get my hairdryer and um, now I know it's dry then I can erase all those pencil liners and then because I've dried it I know the ink's not going to smudge and I'm enjoying with my uh, rotary and tiki graphic which is definitely waterproof and that's the reason I love tiki graphic so much um, I'm just thinking I might just move that over and maybe zoom out a little bit as well you can get a bit more of the paint <laughs> coming in there and today I'm using a traditional brush um, and in case you want to know it's a rosemary number no. six series 344 so these are kind of designer brushes which means you kind of get a longer sable brush on the end is the, the hairs the designer brushes tend to be kind of longer and so they kind of hold more liquid and hold more paint as ever I think I'm going to start with <laughs> Naples yellow which all my followers be going oh, of course um, and just to really get this nice warm sort of tummy on the inside like that and yeah and then I'm going to start adding a little bit of sort of oranginess to it and And just keep painting really there's the that's the ear it's very easy to forget those little bits um and we'll just work our way around so this is uh, a sort of very basic undercoat um i think i'm going to need maybe a bit more orange now and some burnt sienna and i'll just kind of work my way around the edges i'm trying not to paint the leaves because i want them to be um they're, they're going to be quite pale i think really because they're kind of dead dead leaves that have fallen uh, we'll maybe have a bit of sort of <laughs> burnt sienna shade around there and I want a bit of shade underneath. Uh, you're allowed to use your fingers <laughs> if you want. <laughs> um, there are no rules. So watercolour is, uh, I don't know, I've said this so many times, but you can always say it again. Watercolour is all about light. It's the light of the paper that's shining through these very thin transparent glazes, um, washes rather. And so you don't want to paint thick watercolor that that, that would be gouache uh, i'm just gonna yeah just thin that slightly and then there we go I add a little bit of sort of a hint of I'm just picking a bit of green off the top there and i just sort of often have some green there and then mix it in with the brown it's a sort of a sepia kind of brown and then sometimes sometimes uh, oak leaves you see are really quite gray so I'm gonna do that one underneath in a kind of a gray color and I've got my tissue here which <laughs> so I can just sort of take color off the brush if I think it's there's too much liquid on the brush I can just do that and maybe this one as well so it's, it's kind of a little um, collection of muted tones I want here like that and while it's wet I'm going to put in a little bit of shade as well 
in there and that's just a bit of neutral tint that I'm picking up from here from <laughs> the last thing that I painted so I, I don't know I suppose some people they studiously clean their palettes after they've done something and I don't because I suppose I'm basically you know the more you the more you go the more you find you sort of work on the, the similar kind of palettes unless you're setting out to paint something very very different I think you it's because you have similar um, interests I suppose and like to keep sort of painting the same thing as I'm going to put that highlight over there instead uh, maybe it's you know you like to paint the same thing each time in which case you know if you're painting animals you know it's going to be lots of browns in your palette probably and, and all this kind of stuff around <laughs> in the mixing wells there's all going to be lots of browns and, and so you don't need to clean it up because you're just going to use them again next time and with watercolour you're not wanting great big wadges of of colour you just want this thin stuff that you can um, just pick up and so I'm just sort of mixing a little bit there and just going to drop a bit of brown in and, and while it's wet I think this is the other thing you've got two things with watercolour you've got while it's wet you can drop colours in and they'll just kind of sort of merge and then when it's dry then you'll get a hard edge rather than that soft kind of merging um, I think I have a little bit of green on one of these leaves maybe a bit like that so it's just fallen and then we can have a bit of sort of brown in there too and i think some of these can maybe be mottled as well so but we have to wait for it to dry before you can do the mottling we need some uh, veins on that one. Oh, and there too and there <laughs> so i want a very different kind of flat kind of gray kind of leaves close to our dormouse here and here you can see where I've painted over now I'm kind of <laughs> trying to wash that brown out I'm trying to wash the hard line that was left there out and you can just do that and just sort of keep keep working at something and you'll sort of get rid of that line um, so yeah you can see here now these are kind of hard lines where they've dried and I want to get rid of those so again it's just kind of working into it uh, like that uh, I've got a lot of it here I'm going to add a little bit of purple this time I think just to give a bit of I know you don't get purple <laughs> oak leaves really but I'm, that's what I'm doing just to separate them out a bit and we can have another one over here as well um, and while I'm at it we can probably have one here too and so we want it's just different tonal variations and color variations hues and so these are really tense um, so you've got your, your hue is the color and the shade has a bit of gray added to it or black added to it I have a little bit of brown added to that um, and then and then a, 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 you've got a hue and a shade and a tint a tint is like heading towards pastel and you're adding white to it for a tint and so with the watercolor you just add more water and just make it a really much thinner color to get a tint I think I might have another little bit of green just down there like that and maybe or oh, maybe a little hint of sort of greeniness there clean my brush and then maybe a bit more <laughs> brown and, and while it's all wet you can see that it sort of mixes in nicely 
and they just kind of merge those colors fading one into another and again I'm going to change that tone color rather <laughs> the hue <laughs> I think when you when you're painting and you're talking at the same time sometimes the wrong word comes out <laughs> and, and you're trying to think hue tone shade tint and this um, doesn't always work uh, a little bit of sepia I'm going to add in here so I'm going to make these a bit darker up here like that and that one there that can be sepia uh -huh. and why not underneath there as well and I think we could have a bit of green on this side too like that maybe that one up there too what about that there um, and then we'll blend in some sepia kind of tones with that. And we want something much darker underneath here. There we go. And we can blend in there. So you just need to keep keep on the move. I think that's sort of one of the secrets. Uh, just keep working, keep working. Well, a little bit of green there as well, I think, and up to there, and and then we'll add a bit of sepia now. I think. Oop. It's yeah. I'm afraid I can't show you the whole mixing thing because then the picture will be too small. I think. Oh, we need a little bit more there. Good, I think that's all our basic leaves done. Um, and then we're going to want to have... Um, I'm, I'm just going to do a, an, an undercoat there. Like that for all those acorns. We want a sort of a soft pink, so I'm going to get Naples yellow. And a bit of scarlet. Like that. And then a bit of fluff on the brush, and then we can do these little pores like that. And just give a little more of a, a little blob on the toes. So I'll just sort of bring them out a bit like that. Now I'm getting some sepia. And here I'm going to put in, this is going to be kind of shade, that. And then I'm just going to kind of brush it. I'm going to want some underneath here too, I think, like that. So it's, now it's trying to build up some shape to the whole thing. And sort of, I'm going to get sort of a feeling of curvature to the... <laughs> This a nice round bottom here. They're, they're so cute the way they curl up. Um, I'm going to want a bit underneath there as well. So that could be a, quite a bit darker underneath there, possibly. Oh, I've forgotten the whiskers as well. I'm not, don't let me forget the whiskers. <laughs> Something I invariably forget. Um, let's get a bit more sepia, I think, here. So that's too strong. So I'll just clean the brush slightly, and then we're just kind of trying to get a bit of sort of furriness in here. So this is A, B, C, D. This is D for Dormouse. So A was Armadillo, and B was Badger. D, A, B, C. <laughs> C was Highland Cow. Highland Coo. <laughs> and so D is Dormouse. So what will E be? Uh, obviously, I suppose elephant comes to mind. There wants to be an animal and not a um, not a bird or an insect or anything. So what do you reckon? Put your comments in the suggestions box. Suggestions box, comments box below. Like that. So we get a bit of. Um, sort of shading coming in here 
And there was a bit of shading in, cut in there by mistake. So I'm just sort of <laughs> smoothing it along. Um, and I'm just feeling I need a bit more sort of gold in there. A bit more goldenness, which I think is going to need a bit of yellow. So I'm getting some cadmium lemon. So I'm going to mm, cadmium lemon and a bit of scarlet lake to get a bit more. Uh, not sure. I want this kind of rich. Sort of golden brown colour. And it's all about building up, building up. That's that's watercolour. It's building, building, build. Oh, that's now two. So I'm gonna hmm, wash that and dab it to get that out. And then again here. We want this golden brown. Texture like sun. Sun? Sun. What is it? That's the stranglers golden brown texture like sun or sand. Oh. <laughs> uh, keep working, keep working, keep working. I think we need some around there too. Hmm. So I'm going to do a bit more on these leaves now, I think, while I think about that. So I'm just going to sort of Add some. Oh, I think I probably need neutral tint actually, a bit of neutral, just to start adding the kind of 3Dness of the leaf a bit. And those who know me will know I use neutral tint a lot, and it's um, it's a Winsor and Newton color. You can use like sort of Payne's Grey and Davies Grey, but I just really like neutral tint, and it's it's sort of if you use black, then it just messes up the whole picture and just kind of makes everything really dark and dirty. Whereas neutral tint sort of does what you want black to do by sort of providing shade and um, things like that and and tone, but but it doesn't ruin the picture and it's a sort of a it's a neutral tint here so I'll get a blob on there it's a kind of a slightly bluey grey and I just love it and I, I think I discovered it really quite early on um, and I used to use um, Dr. what's this radiant inks I can't remember what's he called here we are. I used to use these a lot. Doc, Doc Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolors, um, which I don't really use much now. And and I discovered that I could put a load of tone underneath for something. So yeah, I know some people do this completely. They paint the whole thing in grey tones and then kind of put those colours over the top. And I found I could do some things like that, which work really well. Um, and in doing that, I discovered that the neutral tint is actually a really useful colour, even if it is basically grey. Grey is a colour too. No, it's, actually, grey isn't a colour, is it? No, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tint of black. <laughs> in theory, so it's black with some white in it, isn't it? Or is it white with some black in it? That's that's a whole different philosophical. <laughs> rabbit hole to go down uh, so oh now if you want a rabbit hole then I'm going to put a link underneath here to a video I went down this video rabbit hole with this young guy who's built uh, a log cabin in the forest <laughs> like our forefathers did I think he's Swedish I'm not sure and it just came up you know as things do on youtube and i thought what is that and i just started watching and an hour later i thought how long is this video and i checked it it's like a two-hour video and it's um mesmerizing the guy in 
the forest building <laughs> building a log cabin and, <laughs> and there's no sound he doesn't talk. well there is sound but he doesn't talk doesn't say anything it's just him and he starts off with a one dog and ends up with a puppy so it's in, as it's over two years so uh, my daughter and I were wondering quite where the where did the puppy come from and she reckons that the the original dog um, was maybe a family dog or something and or friends who came by or something like that and um, and then he gets a puppy who is sort of with him the whole time and sort of bouncing around in a in a cute and adorable way that puppies do you know like that now we're getting I think we're starting to get somewhere now and I'm just thinking we've got to get some kind of feel of fur but that's too unsubtle and I'll just bring in a bit more around there like that and and underneath there and underneath there the the making making the t-shirts and stuff actually kind of takes me back to when I was in my uh, early 20s before I went to art college and I didn't print t-shirts but you generally print t-shirts with silk screen printing techniques and but I worked for a screen printer designing stuff and and so I, I think I've always had that and in fact my first job when I left school was in printing in a little sort of instant printer in town and churning out artwork for the local builders and solicitors and whatever <laughs> the rate I used to churn out artwork was just phenomenal that was fun and I think what I really loved about that was that you know you do this piece of artwork and take it down to the camera room and make a plate and hand it over to the printer and then out will come these letterheads or business cards oh someone at the door um and 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 then you know so, so that sheets and sheets of card or paper would be printed and then then i always i used to go and do all the guillotining as well and it's all that sort of making and creating i think that's what i really loved and you know making a really good tight guillotine gut <laughs> there's something very satisfying about it pink in the paws there so i'm just going to drop a bit more pink in there just to make it look a bit more pinky and like i say it's just constantly working it and working it and working it isn't it and i might even at some point get um my coloured pencils out just to add some details. I think I'm going to get a, a finer brush now. So this is the same series two, but this is the series three, four, four. But this is a number two. And I'm just going to try and get some little bit of sort of hint of fur in there, and underneath here we want to make that a little bit darker. And I'm just picking up. Right, so we get a bit more neutral tint and it's just sort of picking it up and brushing it down we're going to need some underneath there i'm going to need a bit underneath there i think to create shade and i think it's a little bit underneath the the eyes and we're gonna want this just is this just sort of it's a bit complicated this one isn't it? so we're gonna keep sort of doing these bits just to put sort of sort of light and shade and shape and into the leaves and it's actually coming up to my lunch time now <laughs> so i might have to switch off and come back to this later which might actually be a good thing so i might come back and see it quite differently that is something that often happens um, i'm just going to put 
in theory I'm putting some blotches on there but it doesn't I'm going to go to a spotting brush which will help me get more of a spotty feel to it some brushes just have completely the wrong sort of shape and they're not going to look right whatever you do you're not going to kind of get that shape to something that you want we want some dark sepia bits in there. I have a feeling this is going to be a long one, isn't it? <laughs> Are you still with me? <laughs> Am I just talking to myself here? I remember I had somebody once ask me if I would do a video or something, and they said, oh, you have this very rare talent to be able to sit in your little shed and talk as if you're talking you know to someone else and like on a one-to-one -one. um <laughs> which is all very well but if nobody's actually listening <laughs> there's no point is there but and i know sometimes my i look at my statistics and I think, oh it's it's a little bit sad and you think oh nobody's watching it through to the end or even <laughs> more than five minutes in but it's some people do I know if you're still if you're still watching let me know in the comments box below but yes I'm still watching and tell me how what how, how many minutes in and you're still watching I'm make that a bit more shaded there and underneath there so we want lots of this sort of shading underneath the leaves to separate them and make the leaves sort of seem to stand out above the dormouse and I think we still want lots more uh, to separate the the tail from the rest of the body to make it stand out so this needs a more going on in there as well and then in the this sort of tummy fold Needs a bit more darkness, so it's getting a hmm, it's getting there slowly, isn't it? But it's a long job. A bit of shade in there, like that. Now, I think I still need uh, oh my goodness, I'm going to have a break. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this <laughs> after I've had some lunch. I'm back from lunch and I'm back from a walk in the forest where I picked a little bit of hazel that's just coming out. I've looked it up. We do have a population of dormice here in the Forest of Dean. Uh, it's been declining, but the Wildlife Trust are working to build new habitats for them, which is great. Now I'm going to change over to coloured pencils here just to add these kind of details. It's sort of furry details, trying to get it to look a little bit more furry in places. And um, so I was out walking with Mrs. Rayner and I was talking about dormice. <laughs> she said, well, what, what was those, what are those things in the pests in uh, people's attics and things? I said, oh, well, that was a dormice. And in fact, that's the European edible dormouse. And here in the UK, they were kept in captivity by one of the Rothschilds near a little town called Tring and they escaped and now they are um, <laughs> an enormous pest they're getting into people's roof spaces and chewing on cables and turning out the lights at night <laughs> so uh, so this is the this is the dear little dormouse this one not to be confused with the edible dormouse which is a pest and I'm wondering quite how much more I really need to do to this. I think maybe I could do some little bits of kind of distressing on on the, these leaves just to make them look a little bit older. But I think having started, I have to use some different colours as well because otherwise it will become sort of mono <laughs> mono. There's got to be a word for it. Um, mono colory. Uh, mono, mono. Um. <laughs> the 
there's got to be a word for it somewhere isn't there so monochrome i guess that's the word and uh, just to put a bit of that in there too i think maybe a bit more underneath just making them look a bit more woody um i'm gonna have a bit of a darker one that i don't really want to get that sort of pencil point look to it I like the um, the texture that you're getting from the pencil but I don't want the, the point I don't want marks I want smudges that's better yeah there's some under there too I think we can put a bit more sort of shade in underneath there I'm going back to the neutral tint now and I just want to kind of make these sort of shadows a bit more definite so that they stand out above the layer below. I think that's too dark so I'm just going to clean the brush and then just sort of push that out a little bit just to... This is too pale here as well, it needs to be much darker down there I think. And as I say it's just building up layer upon layer of colour but still not so much that the light can't get through so it's very thin washes rather than colour really and just taking your time building it up which in the end makes for a rather long video so uh, what can I tell you about my walk, it was a flat walk getting achy hips doing walking recently so I thought maybe a flat walk might help but it didn't really I think we just may be walking further than I normally do we have a family wedding coming up and making sure that we can fit into <laughs> into wedding clothes and outfits and it's very much spring in the air and there's lots and lots of birds twittering about so we saw um, robins and thrushes and dunnocks and black cap I saw and I heard a fantastic woodpecker it obviously got a really resonant tree must have been hollow so it was really really a great knocking noise for a woodpecker I heard a very strange noise a kind of a kind of a honking kind of noise but it wasn't a honking like a geese and I have no idea what it was and now I know I need to put some whiskers in here that's maybe coming out like that so that and we can have one or two coming over the top as well so they've got great long whiskers And I'm just going to put a little sort of smile in there, I think. And I'm going to call that it. And I'm going to scan this and put it into Photoshop and manipulate it and turn it into a T-shirt and a mug, which you can um, follow the links up here and in the comments box down below. You'll be able to get one yourself. Thanks for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Render Drawing channel. Keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.